What's up guys, it's Sidney Simcoe, your host for SLTV and we are here live at the Montalban Theatre for a very exclusive and funny event. It is Rick Nahara's ICU team, Intensive Comedy Unit, and tonight it is a benefit all about comedy. We have our exclusive interview with Marco Regil. He is one of the biggest hosts for American Spanish television. Thank you so much for coming out here for a great cause and supporting your friend. Uh, tell us about uh, coming out here and what it means for you. Well, Rick Nahara is one of the most respected uh, members of the Latino community in the U.S. and he right. was in the hospital. He was in an intensive care unit. He was really close to, you know, kicking the, butt, the, the bucket and, uh, and we're so happy that he's not only alive, but he's healthier than ever. He's losing weight. He looks younger. He's now getting into almost a vegan diet and really? changing, yeah, he's changing his uh, eating habits and now he's going to become a, a great example of what you can do when you, when you become conscious of what you eat and your health. So we're here to uh, support him and, and, and he's going to show us that he's not only alive, but he, that he's better than ever. That's absolutely amazing. I mean, it, it's, it's an inspirational story yeah, because, you know, he's touched a lot of people yeah. and he's, he's an inspirational figure and now he's, yeah. he, he's beaten someone that, you know, yeah. was, was potentially life-threatening. Yeah, I mean, it's like, if, I mean, he'll tell you the, the story, but what I heard from him and reading his blog is that he, uh, he had a, a problem in his house and he, he, he fell and he hit his head and so, I mean, the wife came later and that was uh, almost a miracle that they, he, they found him alive and were able to take him to the hospital and... Uh, but now he's better than ever and uh, he's on the Latino Logs and this uh, Ricardo Montalvan Theater for so many years helping so many Latinos telling their stories and like Eugenio Derbez who was on Rob uh, on CBS did the Latino Logs with him and many many other famous uh, Latinos have done it so we, we really love him and we're happy that he's alive and we're here to support him. And what's really amazing about it is you know as, as scary as this whole was yeah. tonight is all about fun and laughter and yeah. celebrations. <laughs> yes, yes. Well that's what Rick is all about and is I think is really intelligent what he's doing what he's doing because uh, you know rumors are like oh is he okay is his right. mind okay can he <laughs> perform so the best thing that he can do is get up on stage and show everyone that he's, he's better than ever he's proven it yeah exactly have, have you gotten a chance to go backstage and see the rehearsals or what's going on back there no I just I just got here one hour early because I thought it was at seven so Rick was out there checking the the, the, the tickets and everything so. all, all, <laughs> all the, the it's Latino time here so it's like they're, they're running a, they're running a, you know fashionably late but it's a, at eight. I got a key here at seven. I had like an on, on, on British time or something, <laughs> not on Mexican time. Uh, you know, but I, I thought it was on Mexican time. I was barely <laughs> arriving at seven. <laughs> very, very proper. I arrived early. Now, if you guys don't recognize this guy, you are like one of the most famous Spanish hosts to have graced the TV. I mean, you've done some serious. Like, let's talk about this Family Feud. Family Feud. Price is right. Right. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Uh, we just finished the season of uh, Dancing with the Stars, and uh, for 17 years we, I've been doing the Mexican Telethon, which is we raise about 40 million dollars every year for handicapped children. So it, yeah, I've been working since I was 15 years old. I'm 42 now, so it's been 20, almost 27 years of uh, working on on TV, and first in Mexico, and then in Hispanic television here, with mainly with Univision and Telefutura, and now we're going to be doing. Uh, I'm joining the, the the new family of Mundo Fox, which is a new Fox in Spanish network, and we're going to have another franchise, uh, uh, Minute to Win It, Monday through Friday at 7 o'clock. Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> I love Minute to Win It. Oh, really? Yeah, have you, so you've been watching the show. Have you been studying it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we haven't gotten into the rehearsals yet, but yeah, I know the show. And have I, you been practicing the games? Do they, do they allow you to play it? <laughs> Fortunately enough, I'm the host. I don't have to you play have the to games, play but they are doing it now. They're, they're getting castings, and uh, they're casting people, and people are playing and rehearsing and it's gonna be uh, very very interesting I mean the, the way it's all I think that game is all about keeping your cool it's like like being a host I mean if you can be as natural as you can be without the camera then then you're in business right. so these guys rehearse in their houses and they they practice and practice but once you get the cameras the lights uh, the audience and the mind gets in there and oh my god people are watching me I'm gonna look like an idiot and you get all of that part of your brain kicking in that's a, that's when it makes it when the whole thing gets really so hard pressure uh, under pressure it's pressure it's performance here's the funny thing and it's true this is a true story about minute to win it yeah i actually auditioned for minute to win oh, it really? yes mm -hmm. they called me and one of my friends was uh invited for the show and they said yeah. bring your friends i auditioned yeah. and i've never i never knew what the show was before uh -huh. now have you ever seen the game where they take the pencils and they you have to bounce it off of the eraser <laughs> yeah. into the thing yeah, yeah. that's what we had to do on the actual audition i came first 
I put four pencils in four cups in 17 seconds. That's and I still didn't get called. Why? Why did I not get called? I don't know. But that's a tough one. That's a really tough right. one. It's one of the tough ones, apparently. That's a very, very tough one. I don't know. We, we have actually the same crew that we're doing the, the castings for the English version of it, the English-speaking version of it. We're going to have them on the Latino version of it. Oh, so cool. so I can introduce you to the guy and we can tell yes, him, like, this why in the world <laughs> didn't you get this guy on TV? <laughs> exactly. I want Minute to Win It. Whether, whether it's Spanish win, uh, Minute to Win It or American Minute I want to go on that show. If you pretend you're... I'm very competitive. If you pretend you're Puerto Rican or something, we Puerto can... Rican? We, yeah, exactly. Rico, I'm, I'm Rico no, from... Puerto Rican. Uh, Rican. So you can pretend you're Latino and, and then you can go in there, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so what I found out was, for my friend who was on the show, yeah. they actually have like a whole week of training yeah. for the actual games. They have to. They have to. In every single game show, you train people. And the, the Price is Right is the only one where you don't train them because you just pick them right, right. off the bat. Right. And they, you call them, come on down, and they don't know they're, they're going to participate. But the Price is Right is just higher, lower, instead of two, instead of three. But in the Family Feud, Fifth Grader, all of those shows, you cast the audience, the, the, the contestants. The contestants are your stars. So you want people there with the potential of winning. So can you imagine if we didn't do a casting and a training, they win. Yeah, just, the success rate would be really low. Yeah, so you really want people that are ready for success, ready to win. But of course, when the nervousness kicks in, the pressure kicks in, then they lose 50% of the time. So that's why we really, in every game show, except The Price is Right, you really have to train them. Okay, I want to talk about The Price is Right, because The Price is Right is one of the most monumental game shows ever, ever. on television. Number ha one. I, I would say it's number one. Have you ever gotten a chance to meet Bob Barker? Yes, of course. I met him uh, back in 1998 when we were about to start the Price is Right in Mexico. We came here for training. He introduced me in his show, and I I, I met him many other times. Uh, I've seen him lately a few times because I'm I'm, I'm vegan and I'm, I support PETA, people oh, okay. for the ethical yeah, treatment yeah. of animals. And he's all about plugging in, you know, get your pet uh, pets uh, spayed or neutered. Yeah, well, and he donated. Uh, he he has donated serious amounts of money for. Uh, 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 for example, the, the PETA building here in Los Angeles is called the, the Bob Barker building. He donated $3 million wow, for the construction of that building. He donated $5 million to the Sea Shepherd organization for the whale wars. They have a ship called the Bob Barker ship. So he has donated millions of dollars wow. to the protection of, of and rescue of animals. So we, I saw him there at the PETA event and every time there's a vegan documentary, <laughs> he's there all the time. And it's really funny because they say, well, what a coincidence that the host of The Price is Right in the U.S. and the host of The Price is Right in Mexico are both vegan. They're both with, with PETA, and uh, we, we have a lot of similar, similar things, and I really, really respect him. He's by far the number one guy. Now, <laughs> speaking of similarities, do you also do the plug in Spanish, uh, get your pets uh, spayed or neutered? Uh, we, we, not that one. We do another one. I normally recommend people to, since in Mexico, and the U.S. too, but Mexico is the number one country in child obesity in the world, the U.S. is number two. Uh, we also, we, I already push for a vegetarian diet. I, I tell people, really? try at least one vegetarian meal a day. To okay. So I say something like, help fight uh, child obesity, encourage your kids to have at least one vegan meal a day or something like that. So it's a little different, but we're on the same same cause. It's the same thing. Is is you know eating all these processed foods are affecting kids. I know it's cruel with animals and it's cruel with the environment. So it's all connected. I uh, I took a, a one week vegetarian uh, challenge. <laughs> no, and it ac it actually turned into a year. Oh really? Yeah. Nice. It turned into a year, and then I I was running a marathon. I injured my knee. My knee yeah. wasn't recovering. Yeah. And then I decided to go back to meat, and yeah. and and my knee recovered. But yeah. I will say this: I had the most amount of energy when I was a vegetarian. That yeah. hands down. Yeah. And and uh, the thing is, you just have to get education. Like to get your protein, you can get it from beans, from lentils, yeah. from spinach, cottage cheese, from kale. Yeah, cottage cheese is not is not vegan, but it's, it comes from a cow. Oh, from vegan. I'm sorry. I thought you meant vegetarian. I, I was on a vegetarian diet, so I was eating cottage cheese. Yeah, and but one of the best proteins you can get is called spirulina. Yeah. That's the best protein, and none of those are animal proteins, and they're great for you. So, it's good for the environment, good for you, good for the animals. So, I mean, I I don't I don't understand that not everyone is gonna go vegan, but what I encourage people at least have one dish. Yeah, just just incorporate it. Incorporate it. Uh, I mean, I can give you stats. Back in the 60s and 70s, people people were eating much less meat. The, the, the meat consumption has increased by 350% from the 70s to the 2000s or 2010s. Wow. It's, it's huge. We don't need that amount of meat, I mean, for sure. Even if you, don't, you say, I'm not going to be vegetarian or vegan, right. we have exaggerated the amounts of animal products that we're getting in. And, and there's, there's many reasons, I mean, to, to go vegetarian or vegan or to at least include one meal a day, which is nothing. And 
and it makes a huge difference for your for your health, for the animals, and for the planet. Can we hear what it sounds like when you're signing off in, uh, in on the Price is Right? I want to hear the whole thing. Esto fue Atina del Precio. Soy Marco Antonio Regil y les recuerdo que como Gandhi seamos el cambio que queremos ver en el mundo. Adiós. <laughs> And this guy is extremely, extremely busy. You know, um, what we do is we connect our Facebook fans and Twitter fans with the actual stars. Um, and so a lot of people have been asking a lot of uh, various questions. I guess my question to you would be, you know, you've been, you've been filming, you've been hosting yeah. so many of these shows. What would you say, do you have one in particular contestant that sticks out to you in your whole career that is just one of the funniest moments you've had? Well, with me, with, with The Price is Right, I have, I have, with different shows, I have different stories but with the prices right there was a lady that won a brand new car but when she you know when you have items that you play with in order to get the car so the last number in the price of the car was the first one of the two numbers and uh, one of the three numbers I'm sorry in the price of a of, a, of an ironing uh, machine what do you call it a plancha and an iron you know yeah. like an iron I'm an sorry iron. an iron exactly so so she, she gave her the number she won the car and everyone went nuts and, and she didn't get it. She thought she was winning the, the iron. iron. <laughs> she never understood that she was playing for the car. She thought the car, you know, it's an older lady. Yeah, yeah. She never got it. <laughs> she, she didn't know how, but she won a car. And I was gonna, you want a car? Like, oh yeah, nice car. And said, no, 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 you won the car. And like, and they're like, what, what? And, and I mean, you would have to see that reaction, but it was, it was amazing. So she just legitimately thought she was playing for an iron. Yeah, and she was happy with it. <laughs> and she was, she was, she was really sweet. <laughs> she was very, very, very sweet. And uh, and we we had we had many uh, many of them of those. And uh, and, and, the, and you know you, we fell on the floor celebrating. People that would try to kiss you or grab your butt or things like that. With Bob, they were more respectful because I was just about to say you guys you guys are way are probably way crazier over there, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like way more energy. Yeah, Mexicans don't respect. They, they would come like Bob, may I kiss you? Yes, one yeah. kiss on the cheek. Oh uh, no, they don't. No, well. They probably first, jump all over you. Yeah, well, first of all, Bob is older, and right, they would you know. respect the, the gray hair, you know? But they, that wasn't the case with me, because I started at 28. They would see me like, like their kid. So they would just hug me and put me on the floor, and they would ju just jump, jump all over me. So it was a... Uh, uh, the Price is Right for me is, is the most exciting game show I've ever I've ever been into. Is it really true on The Price is Right? I know we're standing on the uh, staying on The Price is Right, but is it true that you don't know the prizes that are about to be given away? You have no idea. Uh, kind of. No, I don't, we don't know. First of all, we don't know the, res the, 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 the price of things, the prices, because we don't want to know the results, because otherwise, as a host, you wouldn't react with the contestants. We know the rules. We don't know the prizes, but depending on the game, there's game if you watch The Price is Right enough, you know that if you're going to play the, uh, uh, the Lucky Seven, it's a car. If you're going to play uh, uh, Cliffhangers, it's not a car. Right. If, so the, depending on the game, you know there's games. You know like, what type of prize you're going to get. Yeah, if you see the Pathfinder, that's what we say, which is which. What, what's the prize first, and then we reveal what game you're going to play, because otherwise people will know. If I told you, like, we're going to play Pathfinder, oh God, you know, it's a car. Yeah. So we, we cover those things so that, yeah. So we do know what games are coming because we didn't know we need to know where we're standing what cameras and there's a position in the on stage for every single game so we obviously know that this game has a car and we know what game is what game is coming so you know in rel relative to the american show how would you uh, compare the prizes that you give away well it's a very different budget the mexican prizes right broke all the records in latin american television we we uh, we it was it run for about 3 years and we gave away about 600 cars and trips and houses and things but by far the the economy of the united states it's it's it's, it's stronger or it used to be stronger <laughs> it's stronger and uh, there's no way you can give that. I like how it used to be, yeah. It used to be. It's not, it's not. Well, I used to fight my contracts. I always wanted in dollars, but now I want them in pesos because the pesos <laughs> is holding on better. It's, I, I grew in Tijuana. I grew in, the, in, in Mexico. And my dream was to come here and make dollars and all of that. So I and became now, a citizen. And now I find myself here and like, oh, great. Now the Mexican economy is getting better. Oh, so, you know. But no, but, but I mean, you cannot give a Porsche or a, or an, or, or a, a huge SUV. or it's, There's things that I mean the American economy is a, is a 350 million people country is yeah. one of the greatest economies of the world so it's, it's a different it's a different thing this is something that really interests me is how how
how is it possible that there's one host for all of the major shows? Usually in American television, it's like, you know, Bob is the guy for Price is Right. And, you know, Alex Trebek is, you know, for Jeopardy. It's like they have the faces. How is it possible that you do all of it? Well, there's, there's more. Not that, I'm, not, that, not that I'm complaining. I'm sure you're very happy about that. But it's just interesting. Yeah, just cut, cut that part out. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm the dictator of, of game shows in Mexico. I have a monopoly. There. Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. No, it's different. I mean, obviously, the shows that I'm mentioning are not the only shows that are on the air. There's been other Obviously. shows. But those are monumental shows. Those are yes. those are like, you know, one of the, you know, the big shows that we have here. What happens is that's a really good question because the Latino culture is a little different. People get tired of things easily. So having a show for 37 years or 40 years like the price is right in Mexico like the prices right here in the US and Mexico would be very difficult. People watch something for a couple of years and they want something else. So they give them the family feud and they have it for a few years, they give them fifth grader. They watch them for a couple of years, they bring back the prices right. So they just mix it and match it because it's, it's if you take into account, for example, the Sabado Gigante, which has been on the air for 50 years in US television, Univision with Don Francisco. If you're flipping through the channels on, on Saturdays, you might have seen him. That show changes all the time. He is, if, there, if, the, if, if, uh, if Dancing with the Stars is popular, he does a dance competition. If, if a reality show is, is popular, he does a reality show in there. So he could be, even though it's the same show, he keeps changing the content of the show and that's how he has lasted for so many years. So long story short, Latinos tend to get tired of the same formula faster and they want more vari variety. That's why Latino men are not as faithful as American guys. You heard it. You heard it here on SLTV. Rule of thumb. Yeah. Rule of thumb. Don't think. No, I have American friends that are unfaithful, and I have Mexican friends who are faithful. But in generally speaking, the variety thing. I shouldn't have said that. I, uh, I'm, I'm looking at. Does, it, does he have a ring or something? <laughs> yeah. Hey, isn't it true? Isn't it true? How many Latinos are faithful? How many Latinos are faithful? Yeah, Latinos. If I had a sister, I would tell her like. Mary I have a feeling he's going to be single for a really long time. I'm just saying, I don't know. No, I am one, I'm one of the faithful ones. That's what I say. <laughs> Secretlanguage.tv. My name is Marco Regil. And uh, check, check out Mundo Fox and Minute to Win It very soon in September. Take care. And make sure you have at least one vegetarian oh, or yeah. vegan dish um, a day. A day. Yeah, yeah. Go to Cafe Gratitude. Go to Real Food Daily. Go to the Veggie Grill. Go to Golden Me. And there's there's plenty of places to go in the U.S. Marco is also a, a publicist for uh, <laughs> for the vegan diets. Yes, I don't make any money out of that, but but I'm I'm promoting it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so man. much, man. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you fun. so much.